Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video which is heavily inspired by a video I watched from Ben Awad um, in which I will basically just go over all the technologies and languages that I am planning to learn in 2021. So a lot of you guys have asked me like some, what about a roadmap? What, what should I learn? What steps should I take? Um, so I've made a video on that. However, I also thought it would be a good idea to make a video talking about what I still don't know or what I want to perfect, right? So I divided this video into um, languages that I'm planning to learn, um, like front end technologies that, I'm, that, that I want to learn, back end technologies, and also like anything related to deployment uh, or like scaling applications, systems design, that kind of stuff. And before we actually get into the video, if you guys could leave a like, um, it would massively help the channel grow. We're growing really fast and I really, really appreciate that. I'm putting a lot of work into the videos, so I would really appreciate if you guys could leave a like because that will help me massively. Now that we have all of this um, said, let's actually get started and go over all the technologies that I'm planning to learn. So first of all, we're going to talk about all the languages that I want to learn. And languages is something that is a bit different because... Um, like most languages are the same and in a sense that like you don't need to learn every single language uh, especially because um, for example if you learn JavaScript it is very useful for many different aspects of web development so usually you don't spend a lot of time learning a language per se so that's what I wanted to get out of the way so for that reason I am actually planning on learning or practicing um, two different languages this year and they are Golang and C++. So first of all, Golang or Go is a language that I believe was developed by Google and it's starting to get a lot of popularity, which is really awesome because um, it is a great language. The reasons to why I want to learn this language is, first of all, it is extremely fast, like it is very high performant. And at the same time, it is really easy to learn um, syntax wise, right? So it is as fast, for example, um, it's arguable that like people can argue that it is as fast as the C based languages but you don't need to worry about stuff like pointers and the syntax is a lot easier to learn. So that's something that I really, really enjoy it. And it's really good for um, building like secure large applications. So like in the sense that if I want to use it for a back to, to create an API, it's going to make my application run very fast. And also um, just as a, as a positive, it, it is also like it involves um, type checking, right? So it's differently from JavaScript, but not differently from TypeScript, um, Golang, um, checks for types so that we we don't have any issues with that, which is something that languages like JavaScript and Python doesn't do. And also um, the final reasons because um, I'm actually going to have to use Golang for my job. Um, I won't get too much into that, but I have a job for the summer and I'm going to have to use Golang. I started learning it a bit. Um, I'm still practicing it, but I definitely want to be really good at it before the summer. Then by the end of the year, if I if I have time, I'm also planning on learning C++. The thing is, with C++, I actually already have some experience with it. Um, in like 2017, I, I, I did a course um, where I learned C++ for like game development. And I, I kind of enjoy the syntax. It's, it's a bit weird, but I kind of enjoy the syntax. It is extremely fast. I believe it is the fastest language um, out there, right? And I know you need to deal with a bunch of stuff that you don't usually need to deal with on higher languages, like higher level languages. However, it is good because I want to improve my low level programming. Um, and also because I'm interested in operating systems. So maybe um, learn how to um, deal with that, learn how to code um, operating systems. I know that's kind of like out of reach right now. However, it's something that I'm really interested in. So I can definitely use that. And finally, I also want to stop using Python for interviews. Um, and there's nothing wrong with Python. Actually, Python is the easiest language for interviews. But if I can get really good at a language like C++ or Golang, then I think it would be really good to use those for interviews because those languages are extremely fast, meaning that my algorithms can run really fast. Now, let's actually get into talking about all the front end technologies that I'm planning to learn. And right off the bat, um, I'm planning on learning Ionic. And for those who don't know, Ionic is actually um, a library or a framework, I'm not, I'm not sure. However, it is used to create um, kind of hybrid applications, which um, include um, websites um, that also work as an application in your uh, in your phone, right? So you guys probably heard of um, progressive web apps. So basically, people use Ionic to make progressive web apps. So that's something that I'm interested in. I, I'm not that familiar with. I haven't had a lot of time to practice it. So it's definitely something that I want to check it out, right? Also, I want to try um, maybe one or two CSS 
frameworks. And the thing is, um, I've never used Tailwind CSS, which is probably one of the most famous ones. Uh, I've used, um, I don't know, Bootstrap, Material UI. I, I use a lot of stout components, especially nowadays, and I love it. However, I also want to try out Tailwind because um, I often realize that if I'm not trying new stuff out every single, like, every couple of months, then I'm stuck to something that I really don't know if it is the best option, right? So before I actually knew stout components, I was constantly having to deal with um, boilerplate from using something like um, Bootstrap, which I disliked. And when I learned stout components, it made my applications look so much better. Um, my code was very well organized, so I definitely love it. But I want to try Tailwind because I hear a lot of good stuff from it, so it's something that I'm really interested in learning. Also, this last three things, um, it's kind of like... I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a, a wish. I, I wanna improve my design, like learn more design patterns for React projects. Um, I wanna kind of like just try out new things, see how people organize their projects because there's always some things that I can improve. And I also really want to stop using uh, CRA, which is Create React Tab. The reason for that is not because it is a bad thing. Um, it's really good, I think it's really easy for beginners um, and I've used it for most of my projects. However, I, I, I know that when I'm building a large scale application, something that um, can be built for like a startup or something like that. It is nice to have control of your actual React project and not have to use some boilerplate. So it's something that I really want to improve on. So it's something that I'm planning on doing. And finally, also, I really want to create a React library. If you guys have any ideas, um, I, I don't think you guys would share, but like um, if you have any ideas for a library or some sort of extension that I could create that would help on the React development, I would love to hear because I really want to code one. I, I, I it's one of the things that I really want to do. I want to help the open source community. So if I could create something like that, it would be awesome. Now let's go into um, the backend technologies and languages that I want to learn, right? So first of all, I've already talked about um, wanting to learn Golang. So the reason why I want to learn Golang is to actually use it um, to code API. So I want to learn backend development with Golang. And that's something that I really want to do because I honestly think that um, just the infrastructure, like how Node.js was designed, it's not as good as Golang for creating some, something that is scalable with several users at the same time. So the architecture for something like Node.js um, would be disfavorable when I'm trying to build something that um, could become really big, right? So I want to learn a language which can provide me that stability and that scalability, um, while at the same time bringing me a good development environment, which I think is what I would get if I started coding on Golang. Also, I really want to try different um, GraphQL libraries because, um, and what I, what I mean by that is, for example, in Node.js, I... I've made videos before using Express GraphQL, and it's probably one of my favorite ones. And I've used Apollo GraphQL as well, which is really good. Um, I prefer Express GraphQL, however, there's many different differences between them. And I just want to try out all their different libraries. That's just something that I, <laughs> I want to do. Uh, maybe post some videos on YouTube about that, maybe. Um, I just want to open up my opportunities to see which one would I prefer. Also, um, this is something really dumb, however, I just want to try it out. Uh, for my past applications, all of them, I realized that I used um, JWT as part of my authentication. So I, I used some, t t like it was a token-based authentication for most of my projects. And I really love Redis, which is like a, a kind of a, a cache um, database. So I, I really want to start using more of session-based authentication, which I really like as well for some of side projects. So that's something that I'm planning on doing. However, I'm not really sure. It just depends on how I'm feeling whenever I start a new project. And finally, I need to learn DynamoDB. And for those who don't know, DynamoDB is um, a NoSQL, kind of like a document-based um, database that is hosted by AWS. And I, I want to learn it because, first of all, it will be helpful for... Um, whenever I'm, I'm, I'm using AWS, it would be helpful for my job. And also, um, it's something that I, I want to learn because I... I don't know, I just wanna, it's a, it's a good good thing, right? I wanna try out this database. I'm not that used to NoSQL. I've used, I'm used to MongoDB. However, that's the only NoSQL database that I've tried before. So it would be interesting to see um, other databases as well. Now, finally, I wanna talk about all the different deployment um, technologies. I don't even know how to call them. Um, just technologies that will help me with improving my project um, how can I say, environment and just being able to handle um, designs and and just improve my skills in web development in general. And those things are, for example, 
Um, first of all, I really, really want to be good at AWS. So it's something that I've used before. I've used AWS for hosting. I've used S3. Um, I also worked at a startup which used um, EC2 as part of their um, as a part of their server. And we also stored um, images on S3. So that's something that I'm, I'm used to as well. However, I really want to improve. I want to be good at AWS because I know it is a, a like an, a crucial skill nowadays because AWS is basically... Um, it's basically taking over the world in a good way. It is a really good service, and I I would really like to learn it. Um, also, I want to be good at like scaling application, creating microservices, just be better in general at design patterns and kind of like designing systems. So that's something that I'm really interested in as well. So I'm definitely going to study more the theory behind. Um, everything also understand more about networking all that kind of stuff and just practice a lot try to build application host them um, try to build something something that would really need AWS um, and we'll see how that goes right and also kubernetes which is um, definitely a technology that I really want to learn um, I have a friend who worked at he's my roommate and he worked at SAP which is a really really good company and he, he basically just focused on Kubernetes and he told me everything about it I'm, I'm really interested in learning it um, so it's definitely something that I really want to try it out so that's basically it for a deployment and that's also basically it for the video um, th I know this is a quick video it's like I don't know 15 minutes long I usually make more long videos I, I usually make tutorials as well however if you have any questions uh, about like what you should learn next what steps should you take um, just leave it down below I'll definitely check it out I'm really interested at, at with uh, talking with you guys I respond to every single comment so I would really appreciate it and if you like the video please leave a comment down below what you want to see next and subscribe if you're not subscribed because that would massively help the channel and yeah that's basically it i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and i see you guys next time